SCP-001. The following files have been classified top secret by order of the administrator. General Notice 001-Alpha. In order to prevent knowledge of SCP-001 from being leaked, several or no false SCP-001 files have been created alongside the true file or files. All files concerning the nature of SCP-001, including the decoy or decoys, are protected by a mimetic kill agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest in any non-authorized personnel attempting to access the file. Revealing the true nature or natures of SCP-001 to the general public is cause for execution, except as required under... SCP-001, The Lock. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-001 is to be kept locked along with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sublevel 1 of Site 10. The vault is a custom-manufactured, reinforced concrete and steel, vertical octagonal prism. See Appendix U for full schematics with a 2,000 kilogram, 0.9 meter thick, time-locked access portal in the ceiling. The time-locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Y. Mirsky. Access is conditional on three-factor authorization, keycard, fingerprint, and passphrase. SCP-001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. Description SCP-001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellipsoidal, 15.1 cm by 15.4 cm by 16.5 cm, onyx gemstone with a mottled white pattern. Wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator and both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree of gold metal. The gold is sculpted into broad strokes at what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object, but with increasing latitude, the pattern becomes progressively more intricate. Near the north pole, also called the lock or singularity, see acquisition report below, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of optical or electron beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigation is pending advances in microscopy technology. The gemstone continuously emits a small quantity, about 34.5007 to 34.501 milliwatts of thermal radiation in the microwave range. As a result, the gold filigree is warm to the touch. The white mottled areas emit fractionally more radiation than the black onyx areas. Other than this, SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, and, so far, indestructible. See log for Project Pluto below. Its onyx gold composition is guessed from visual inspection, since the taking of samples for chemical analysis has proven impossible. Project Pluto Master Log The following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Conventional Lock Picking Brute force assault with hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, bandsaw, etc. Sustained heating to 5000 degrees centigrade in industrial furnace. Artifact reflected all thermal energy, did not increase in temperature. Direct application of industrial cutting laser. About 160 kilowatts per square centimeter, concentrated on the lock. Artifact reflected all energy. Compression in vice, car crusher, hydraulic diamond-faced press, all destroyed. Application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds, no reaction. Detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5 kilotons of TNT equivalent at point-blank range, no effect. 
detonation of a 15 kiloton TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point blank range. Authorization granted retroactively by Dr. Mirsky. No effect. Following this, Project Pluto was immediately terminated by Dr. Hack, but has since been restarted by Dr. Hirsky and is ongoing with full support of Foundation resources. SCP-001 Acquisition Report The earliest record of SCP-001 is the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish aristocrat Sir Edwin Young, 3rd Baronet, born in 1611 and died in 1677. As was customary at the time, Young kept a cabinet of curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined provenance such as sculptures, preserved creatures, and trinkets. Young's journal included references to his acquisition in 1654 of a bound jewel of onyx and filigree gold, a finesse beyond rational statement, while traveling across the Mesopotamian desert. The journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a bitter, blasted place older than days, or what Young took to be a temple to a fearsome death god. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable side of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. Young's account of his journey to the location of the ruin is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Young's selections of curious provenance lay in storage for several centuries after he died. In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, and priceless example of ancient Sumerian metalworking. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth, its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes in Young's sketch as tertiary Sumerian cuneiform circa 3400 BCE. Only a partial translation is possible, which reads as follows. For clarity, the unknown or untranslated parts will be censored, followed by a description of what they might have been. With loss and... We or I, a noun, a pact, probably a proper noun, on this ending or finality, joy and permanence, or possibly meaning protection. Mr. McCandlish, who performed the translation, noted, This appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. A pact is the name of whatever is imprisoned within the gemstone. SCP-001 was finally placed on semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed that the mottled white pattern on the surface of SCP-001 resembled the cosmic microwave background, a pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire observable universe, as mapped by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe earlier that year. Closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001, along with Baronet Young's journal, was immediately purchased by a Foundation Front organization and transferred to Site 10, where Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Y. Mirsky performed initial routine analysis. Research continues under the auspices of Dr. Mirsky, Dr. Hack having recently left the Foundation. Young's journal also includes several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches, a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitted into its north pole. The key has not been recovered. <laughs>